Hi everyone, I had a request to do a video on optimizing, or basic optimization I should say, of a trading strategy within TradeStation. So that's what we're going to cover this week. So, we've got TradeStation open, in this case it's TradeStation 9.5. The chart that you see in front of you is Tekel, the 3x uh, leverage ETF that I go over in a lot of details uh, about for the Silk long-term investing. Um, and it's a daily chart and we're going back uh, roughly 10 years. So we're kind of in the middle of the chart here, but first step, of course, is to activate your strategy that you're going to take a look at. So in this case, what I've chosen uh, is Supertrend 2 long strategy, which is basically an ATR-ish type of strategy, and I've just loaded it with the very basic defaults. So we'll click status on, let's close out, take a quick look to get a feel for it. Uh, you can see it looks halfway reasonable just with the basic um, Results, but let's take a look at uh, oops, view strategy performance report. Get a basic idea, and you can see we've got a lot of kind of craziness going on, and we went quite some time with just sort of barely breaking even overall. So let's see if we can improve on this. Um, so we'll go back into format strategies, click format, and in this case, there's only three primary variables uh, that are used in this system, which is the super median, super ATR, and the multiplier of the ATR. So the first thing you want to do is pick your variable of choice, click on optimize. This will give you the start, stop, and ending that are stepping values to play with. Um, so one important point to note here is that TradeStation does not want you to go down for your variable increments. You always have to go up. So if I said 10 to 1, Step negative one, meaning I'm going to go 10, 9, 8, etc. That will bonk. However, what will work great is 1, 10, 1, meaning you start with one, or more to the point if you happen to do, say, negative 20, that would work, but you couldn't go oops, 20 to negative 20, negative 1. So, just a quick FYI, you always have to go upwards for your variables. So, in this case, uh, super median, we're going to start with one, let's take it to five, let's increment by 0.5. One uh, quick point is sort of a general rule of thumb. You do not want to get too granular with your steps. In other words, you could make it fit really, really well, the past data, but past data always consists of a combination of signal or actual usable information along with uh, an unknown amount of complete randomness. So the more precisely you try to fit the past data, in other words, make this perfect, perfect um, curve on the back data, the vastly greater likelihood that it will fail to underperform because what you've effectively done is modeled the randomness that was present in the past and the randomness that will happen in the future is of course random and therefore almost certainly will not be repeated. So you want to try to stick with more um, broader based increments. So super ATR 2 to 4, let's take it 1 to 5, let's go 0.5 again and the multiplier is currently at 2, let's drop it to 0.5, go to 3, and in this, because it's a multiplier, it has a bigger effect, so let's go with a slightly finer um, step there. So, those are the three variables we're going to test. Our test count's 891. Uh, method, so we've got exhaustive and we've got genetic. If you're going to go with a much, much larger uh, total amount of tests, then genetic is a great thing to do because you will it's spawning generations and mutations and so forth, but the net is it's kind of like applying a mesh over the total surface, whereas exhaustive is literally going through every single calculation. Now, if you have the time and or ability, then exhaustive, of course, is going to give you the most comprehensive results. Um, but so in this case, we've just got 891. It's going to be really fast, so we'll just proceed with that. Um, one thing to note, to save results to file, the separate video I'll have to go over what's called a walk forward optimization, and that's a more extensive uh, optimization process. Um, but that's just the reason that's there, and that will be a, a separate video. So, in this case, let's click optimize and get this running. So, um, what I've actually specified here is perfect profit correlation as the variable to focus on uh, rather than net profit, and perfect profit correlation is trying to kind of provide a nice 45 degree equity curve. In other words, smooth and steady, if you will. Um, even if you could produce more net profit, not necessarily what you want if it just happens to be based on some a few outlier trades and most of the other trades were you know, break even, let's say. 
So in this case, we've got our results here. Um, this is up to date, uh, up to date being 9, September 27th. Um, so let's take a look um, through Sing at Strategy Optimization Report. And you, what you'll have is generally the top 200 results. Uh, and you've got um, a lot of different things in here. But what on the first thing will always be the variables that you optimize on on the left. Um, let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Um, but anyway, you've got your total test number. Your net profit, of course, is always interesting. Uh, but there's a lot of other things interesting, too. Like, for example, your percent profitable. Percent profitable. Um, so in this case, we see really even the best case. We were no more than 54%, dropping all the way down to 41%. Um, and that gives you, of course, an idea of the consistency. You want to look at winning trades versus losing trades, uh, just to give you an idea of the total trades that's going on, because obviously there's commissions to factor in. You can certainly sort, sort on total trades. Um, perfect profit is over here, and that's actually what I optimized on. Um, so in this case, it looks like just slightly below, they had the both same perfect profit, and one pulled out a slightly larger profitability. So the one that's in gray is, of course, is the one that it selected. Um, what is a, a good thing to look for in here can be the stability of the parameters. And what I mean by that um, is that we see that the median at five, 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 several of these were in the top tier. In other words, there wasn't a big um, drop off as other parameters change. And so if you can see a better grouping, you kind of want to look at how the group itself plays out. So for example, if you had a moving average uh, and it shows 10, what you'd want to see is that if you have nine or if you have 11 or if you have eight and you have 12, that those also are performing relatively well. In other words, it's a robust parameter. You don't want to have like 10 is the highest uh, net profit and then nine and 11 both completely dump and you know are, are terrible because that means that it's just a random spike and you're unlikely to have that parameter perform well for you. So that is how you can take a look at a lot more detail and sort from that. Uh, let's take a look at the actual performance report. And uh, it's kind of interesting. I mean, we've got sort of an explosion at the end here, which can be good or bad. I'd certainly prefer to see a bigger, uh, more general 45 degree trend. Um, in this case, what would we have here? It's flashing at 2016. Well, I guess that's not bad. I mean, the market changed uh, fairly uh, a bit because in 2010 to 2012, there wasn't a whole lot happening, particularly in this ETF. And it kind of steadily grew from there. So, um, take a look at performance summary. Uh, I won't go into too much detail because the video is already getting a bit long here, but um, we've got our profit factor, 1.8. That's pretty reasonable. Um, one of the things I like to look at is what's called coefficient variation. We've got 653%. That's not bad. Uh, general rule of thumb is 500% uh, or lower. Lower is better in this case. This is, is, is pretty exceptional. Um, not so great is say a thousand plus. Um, that's simply saying that kind of what is the average return, in other words, of the consistency or reliability of any given trade. And of course, the more closely those are grouped together, then the better the coefficient of variation. What that means is that you're producing steady profits with your trading, not having nothing, 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 and then a big jump. Um, so, you know, performance graph. So that's a, a quick idea of how to actually run it. Um, can certainly scroll back through, take a look. Um, you know, in this case, it's doing a good job of avoiding some of the bigger drops here, and then uh, yeah, go back in there. But you know, riding it up for a reasonable cycle here. So at least in the past four years, uh, this has performed well. Now, one thing we need to certainly make um, check on is commissions, because in this case, the default case is all trading is free, which of course we know is not correct. So let's say that it's $5 per trade. Um, it's probably, yeah, it's about right. It's, it's $4.95 and generally lets you get up to say a couple thousand shares. So um, this is an important thing to factor in. So if we just add in this commission, let's take a look at what happens. And see, this is the one concern where we kind of had some stability there with the commissions. We suddenly start dipping, meaning that this would not work overtly. Now, this is on 50 shares, so you can certainly want to change 
little strategy to reflect how many shares would I actually really be trading because you can scale your way out in the sense that you could trade 2,000 shares, for example, for the same cost as um, 50 shares. Um, and so as a proportion, that $5 would, would drop. And to show that, let's just say 50 is, you know, not necessarily a huge amount. So let's say 300. Oops, sorry, I'm in the wrong field. 50. Um, sorry. Let's get here. Number of contracts. So if we jump it to, um, say, 300. So everything's the same in terms of the trading strategy, performance report. Uh, at least we're break even, and then, of course, we obviously do better. So let's do one more quick rerun on the optimization. Super median was kind of high. Let's bring it here. There. Let's drop this down to two. We'll go slightly finer. And from here, we'll go three. We'll go slightly finer. And let it optimize. And what I'm doing here, the, the main reason for the um, change was I wanted to see that given that we're now accounting for commissions, uh, that will change your optimization results. And ultimately, at least we're break even, arguably, until 2016, then it takes off and does quite well. So um, the whole point of this video was not really to over-optimize this system, but uh, I did want to give you an idea of how to do it and what's involved there. And like I said, uh, walk forward optimization which is basically where you are cycling through periods. In other words, you might go three months of optimization, and then it would take the, the best parameters based on that three months, walk forward into the fourth month, and compare that. So in other words, it's how you would do it in real life in the sense that you know this is today, and going forward, I would take what I felt were the best params currently, and maybe trade it for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, whatever the, the system is, and then re-optimize again. So that walk forward is kind of you know giving you a more realistic version of the way you would trade it uh, in real life. Now this again is just, you want to focus on here, does the system work? Well obviously it certainly works over the past four years in this case, um, and it works pretty well. Um, so on the merits we have a workable system, and we could do some additional fine tuning whether on the system itself uh, or run into walk forward optimization. So hopefully get the basic idea. Like I said, it's um, you can, well let me show you one more thing, which is window. Where is it? Chart analysis preferences is where you get to choose what, uh, a couple things actually, um, what's the highest number of tests you want to keep? 200 is the default, but more importantly, the fitness, or in other words, what are you optimizing on? Because you've got profit factor, you've got your percentage of profitable, your total winning trades, a whole host of things. Um, like I said, I personally like the perfect profit correlation because it's designed to kind of maximize that smooth long-term growth of your equity. Um, but, you know, it's up to you. Uh, there's a return on account, a whole host of things. So this is where you pick it. It's done on a window-by-window -window basis. And um, from changing here, well, it's just let me show you. So instead of perfect profit, I'm just going to say net profit. Um, where is it? Percent profitable. Yep, net profit. Go here. I'm right clicking when that does that, by the way. Uh, format strategies, format. And let's just change all three really fast. Let's go to. And let's bump this up to five again. Slightly smaller. So based on that, we've got 1,500 total tests. Um, and let's just see how it, what kind of curve it produces. You can see it's cranking out through the optimizations. Um, with all those changes, it's not very long. It's basically 10 seconds. And what did we get in terms of its recommended graph? And actually, not too much different, arguably. 
slightly higher profit factor. Coefficient variation went down a little bit, but pretty similar results. So in this case, it didn't seem to matter too much. Um, but you get the idea, and that's kind of the main takeaway, is that you can adjust what you're optimizing on based on that view, uh, chart window preferences, uh, and then from there, um, you know, it's a series of, of running the optimizations, taking a look. And, and one important thing is not just look at the graph, but also, you know, walk back and actually look at what's happening, uh, both from a psychological standpoint, is this a system you could withstand, uh, and just intuitively, is it making sense? Um, I mean, in this case, we see it's riding the ups quite well. It's kind of trying to pick bottoms to some degree, but, you know, it's, it's skipping a good chunk, and then it's generally back in for the uptick and kind of testing the waters on the way back down. So, um, you know, not bad. Same thing here. It got you out, and it's certainly reasonable to avoid a good chunk of that, a good chunk of this. So it's, it's a, a reasonable system, uh, and certainly worthy of further investigation. So... Those are the basics of optimization, and I hope that helps, and see you in the next video.